Welcome back, beginner engravers. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through work holding. That's how you hold the things you want to engrave. I'm gonna show you the basic ball vise, and then I'm gonna to move to some DIY options for those that don't have much money or need uh, some other features. We'll just dive right into it. Again, just a reminder, this is super basic beginner stuff. If you wanna learn from the pros, you should definitely check those out. Uh, Google Sam Alfano, probably the uh, best resource that I've found out there, or go to Engravers Cafe forum to learn more. But back to this. Okay, so you're a beginner, you have a small budget, you wanna learn how this stuff works. I've received so many questions, let's hop into it. Let's start with the more expensive option and then we'll move to the cheaper option, the DIY option. Let's move that out of the way for now and let's talk about the ball vise. So this is a basic ball vise. This was a cheap one. Uh, link in the description below. I found this on Amazon for maybe 120 bucks, roughly. Uh, the prices fluctuate a bit. A lot of people have confusion with these as to how they work. You have this base. The ball is heavy. I mean, so heavy. It sits in there, and on top of that is this vise that opens and closes and it spins. This is so you can turn it with one hand while engraving with the other hand. Now, this right here causes confusion for a lot of people. That right there is a screw that you can tighten and loosen to adjust. It's a brake for the turning. So if I tighten that down, it doesn't want to turn. If I loosen this way up, it turns freely. Make sense? That confuses a lot of people. They get it and they're like, why does it not turn well? What's going on? And here's a tip. If you buy a super cheap one, you can actually disassemble it, clean the bearings in there, lube them up with some high quality lube and put it back together and it'll spin just beautifully. This one's factory. I've not had any problems with it, but I can tell you that I can feel maybe it's a bit harder to spin in some areas because of the low quality grease in there. Um, really didn't affect me much. Now, you have on top of that these attachments. So these are added ones. You can see all these little holes here where you can put in these tiny pegs. There's a bunch of different types of pegs available that are different shapes and sizes um, for holding different things. Clamping stuff in there is kind of a hassle, especially on these very cheap ones because there's a little bit of play in this. See how that kind of rocks back and forth. So something like a coin uh, that applies pressure on the very top edge, it will rock backwards and you'll see that coin kind of lift up at an angle so it's not perfectly flat. It might be kind of hard to see, but it isn't optimal. It isn't perfect, but it works. It'll get you by to start out. Um, there are a bunch of different attachments that come with this. There's different size pegs. So if you had bigger things you were clamping in here, you could put the larger pegs in here and clamp it. You can clamp in between here. If you have something especially large that you want to clamp in there or, or awkward shaped, it's nice to like wrap it in leather so you're not scratching it. Or if you have access to like a 3D printer, that's a very good option as well. Now that's going to be $300 at the cheapest, so that's not really a budget option, but I have used a 3D printer for things like flashlights that are round uh, because I happen to have 3D printers. Now, a very important thing to look into if you're going to get a ball vise or something like that is shape lock. It has a bunch of different names. Let's see if I have a pre-made one here. So shape lock is a plastic that is thermoset. That means it is hard when it's cool, but you blast that with a heat gun and you can mold the shape of, of the plastic, kind of like Play-Doh, but very hot and sticky. So you clamp this in there and it's held down very tightly. And you can see, for example, that was a knife that I had in there very tightly and it, it holds it for you pretty well. Uh, there's a bunch of different names for shape lock and some people use a type of wax for this. I'll put a link in the description below for the thermoset plastic. I like the plastic because when it's cool, it also comes right off of the metal uh, and it's not stuck on there, not much to clean up really. It's nice stuff. And that's really 
it for a ball vise. That's about all there is. This is on the smaller end. There are larger ball vices. There are some that even have an additional adjustment where this top piece can slide side to side, allowing you to keep your focal point of the center wherever you need it as you're working on larger pieces. Let's move on to cheaper ways to do this in DIY ways for things that are maybe awkward and don't fit a standard vise. Let's move this out of the way and bring this over. This is my setup for working on copper plate printing. You can see here a piece I'm working on. It might be a little difficult to see here, but you get the gist of it. It's about half done and it is a massive piece. There's no way I could have done this on the ball vise. So what I've done is I've just hot glued it on a piece of wood. Really, you could stop here. You could just put it on this piece of wood, slap it on a surface, and get to work on it, controlling it with your, your left hand while you engrave with your right. It's not perfect, uh, but it'll work in a pinch. That's great for like coins and stuff like that. Just grab a chunk of wood, hot glue your coin on it, and then you can hold it with one hand while you engrave with the other. That's probably the most budget-friendly way to have work holding. One step up from that would be to get yourself a Lazy Susan. You throw your stuff on it and then you've got something that can spin and that helps hold it in place. Now, uh, this happens to be a circle. Your wood does not have to be a circle. I just had one conveniently that looks pretty, so I used it. It does not have to be a circle. But if you drop this on a Lazy Susan, you're going to run into an issue where you're uh, probably using magnification or whatever and you're wanting to engrave and if you're way over at an edge when you turn it you're not going to get your nice circles for engraving because you're way out at this edge it's very hard to do a smooth you know circle and you need to be able to move that wood to the center you want the piece you're working on at that moment to be able to be at the center so a larger piece of wood could be nice but then you run the risk of bumping into it and stuff like that so a Lazy Susan is a nice upgrade. You can get different size Lazy Susans. You can go to the hardware store and just get little ring bearings, tiny up to huge. And that is very cost effective. Now another cost effective way to upgrade this setup, and I got this from people who do intaglio printing, um, is this. This is just a bag of sand in some pillowcases. Oh, I zip tied it so you can't see it. I bought a five pound bag of, of uh, rice, not sand. I bought a five pound bag of rice, dropped it in a pillowcase, tied it off, zip tied it, and cut that edge. And I'm really just using multiple pillowcases here just in case it should happen to split and start to spill sand. There's really no reason for this. Also because it looks pretty on camera. I put this on here, kind of smack it down to get it in shape. And isn't that pretty? But what that does is, I can put anything on top of it, an awkward shape, an awkward size, and I can move it around to get that center point where I want it to maintain the focus under my microscope. And this has actually turned out to be a wonderful, magical combination that I've been using more than this because I'm doing these larger, more awkward pieces. I can control it with my left hand, move it to maintain the central point so I get nice circles. And all of that with this dirt cheap setup here. I think maybe all told you're talking about $20 worth of material here. Uh, it, you know, especially if you get cheaper pillowcases. Um, but that is one DIY way to do this, to get some nice work holding. And that will hopefully hold you over for a while as you get started. As usual, once you do the kind of DIY, you know, uh, low quality ways of doing it and you, and you upgrade your skills, you're going to want to learn about higher quality things. You know, the companies like GRS have higher quality vices, larger ones, ones that have different pivot points and adjustments. You can learn more about those at like GRS.com or again, going to Engraver's Cafe and uh, seeing what the professionals are recommending there. Hopefully this holds you over for a while though. Good luck. Happy engraving. See you next time.